Hello, friends of the electrified charging fun, and welcome to Electrified Speicher, Speicher Elektrisiert, your channel all around Skoda's e-mobility. And instead of seeing me, you see a lot of Enyaqs provided by Skoda here. Even there is a camouflaged one you might already know. But these are not the only cars here. Look over there. There are, again, a lot of Enyaqs, and these are from Enyaq drivers, because we've got invited by Skoda to Mlada Boleslav as some of the active members of the EV launch on Facebook. And since I'm not on Facebook, but I'm a YouTuber, I'm also invited here. And Skoda wants to talk with us about the Enyaq and what's coming and give us a lot of information. And therefore, I am here to document this and bring this to you. And if you're interested in that, then stay tuned. Our meetup point was at the Škoda Museum in Mlada Boleslav, where we all lined up our Enyaqs to drive behind the Tour de France Enyaq to the Škoda Polygon, that is their test track out in the vicinity of Mlada Boleslav. Here you have a more closed up look to the Tour de France Enyaq. Basically, it's a first generation Enyaq, a Sportline version with all those antennas above, with all those fancy sound they make at the Tour de France and the communication systems in it. And yes, that's some very special Enyaq right here. The first surprise of the day at the test track was that covered Skoda Elrock. Back then it was covered now with the world premiere done. You all know how the Elrock looks like. And it was presented to us by Klaus Selmer, the CEO of Skoda. We had some nice talk with him, but later in the video, you will even find a question and answer section on this. For driving on the test track, Skoda provided several different Enyaqs to choose from. You could do the test drive as much as you like. You could also take the l Rock, And Skoda designed a test track for us with accelerating, deceleration, going through the bands, taking tight turns and doing all the stuff you normally would not do in this intense variations on the road. And I'm here as a passenger, someone drove me to record this for you. Later on, I did it myself with a couple of cars, but I do not have recordings out of this. This was really, really fun. In the afternoon, we transferred from the Skoda test track to the design hall. This is a completely closed hall with no windows in it, but it has this fancy daylight. And within there, they look at prototypes and do design decisions. Uh, for us, there were workshops and when we were there, there was no prototype, so we were allowed to record. And they arranged two workshops for us, the first one on energy and energy systems of the ENIAC and the second one on software. And for the first one, of course, I also ask that very important question so many people have. What about preheating in software version 3? On behalf of all first-generation ENIAC users, yeah. if we are talking energy systems here, you talked about problems with heat in the car. But the main problem for the vast majority is not heat, it is cold. It is what we call cold gate. And it is preheating, so getting a acceptable charging power when it gets colder outside, especially in Scandinavia. But you can go to Germany as well. I bet you even experienced it yourself. What about them? We are working also on that, yeah, I know this question and this is the, the same reason like I mentioned before between the switch 3.7 and 4. Yeah? We need all, not only switch or we, we um, climbed up one step with our battery or not battery, um, um, software at all. We change the hardware infrastructure inside the car. But the hardware is there, right? Because yes. if, you, if you're reaching zero temperature, yeah, yeah. The battery will heat itself. Yeah, yeah. So which means that it should be technically possible to pre, uh, pre preheat the battery before the charging. Yes, yes. Well, and there is good. even the uh, possibility through the OBD2 connector. For this functionality, what you had mm -hmm. mentioned uh, with the OBD adapter, yes, they use an, an diagnostic feature. Yeah. yeah, and with this feature you can try to heat up for 5 minutes yes. or 4 and, and uh, uh, 99 yes. the battery but all the other topics which belongs to the energy system itself mm -hmm. or the energy management not system management yeah inside the icos 1 mm -hmm. they don't 
if you use this one, yeah, because you will switch off all the other functionalities and you only use this um, Stelkli diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah? So this is the problem. So if you use it, I don't know, five times, ten times, yeah, mm -hmm. you heat up the battery, but the, all the other parts didn't recognize that you take out energy from the battery mm -hmm. because this is normally only for diagnostic at the dealership. Mm -hmm. yeah? So on the other side, the question, uh, back to the question um, why we didn't have it right now, we are working on it, but we changed the software structure in the ICAS-1 for the energy management, meter volt and high volt, yeah, for the low voltage topics and sorry for the high voltage topics. And this is why it's so difficult to, because we also changed the battery generation, so we improved the quality or not the quality, the, the uh, chemistry inside the battery cells that the charging power could be a little bit more longer, higher. Maybe you know the charging curves between the first yes. ENIAX and the ENIAX today. And this all include to this energy management. Mm -hmm. and this is why the reason why it's so difficult, but we are working on it, but I can't say... So basically, technically, everything is there in the old ENIAX? No, 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 no. Not even that? The actor and sensors, yes, but you have to reconnect them, because in the new... On a physical level? They are, they are connected. Yes, okay. They have the signals, but on the software side. This is the reason why we have to adjust all these old software functionalities and parts with the new structure of the software from the feed uh, 4.0. The second workshop on software we weren't allowed to record due to some sensitive information, but I can show you this test station here where the HMI team, so the human machine interface team, tests all new things they implement so they don't have to sit in the car directly. They have several of those stations and I find them quite interesting. I would love to have one for myself. Again, again it's nice that we meet and to uh, talk to each other. It's wonderful, so I like. Um, now it's the time for questions. Other questions, more questions, maybe the same questions than before, but ask the boss because um, the boss will leave after that so uh, and he will not leave because of your questions because i think you have the feeling we are open we are touchable accessible so first question okay uh, will epic have the lithium iron phosphate batteries because that that seems to be a major trend coming out of china that you are getting cheaper batteries which last longer yeah uh, Certainly cheaper, uh, the LFP. Uh, we, can't uh, we can't really tell you at this point of time our exact strategy, uh, but we are very aware of exactly what you said. Yeah, the EPIC uh, at the very beginning, most probably not with the LFP, uh, but wait and see. But of course, we, we're also looking at the market and the, the trend is massive shifting towards LFP, also for bigger size batteries now. Initially, everybody said, you know, you could, will never get an 80 kilowatt hour battery with LFP. It's happening. So, yes, it's a big one and we're uh, watching that closely. And a similar question, will uh, the, for example, the SUV, will that have 800 volt architecture? No. The SUV, so you're talking about the seven-seater, the, yes. the space yes. No, that's based on the MEB as we know it today. Um, and uh, that will not have 800 volts. Could Carfax monthly subscription is nearly, for me, three times the price of an IORIC subscription. Why, will, will Skoda Carfax become more competitive again? Or? You know, this is uh, not directly in our business model. So we, you know, we, we're actually we're dependent on uh, our business partners uh, to open themselves up to the market uh, and to be competitive. Uh, I think from a consumer's point of view, uh, bad for us because Power Pass is very much integrated into our ecosystem. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, if the, the market doesn't uh, accept that kind of price level and go somewhere else, uh, they will have to be addressed. Uh, so wait and see. Uh, but uh, I, I can't promise you anything because it's not our wallet uh, in this case. But it is so hard integrated even in your cars that we have the options to filter and plan for power pass but not for any other CPO or else out there. Are there any plans to change that functionality for your customers to have a better charge planning experience? I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll divert the question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into that. Yeah, so I think uh, it is something technically, it was actually asked by the group just before you uh, this is something technically feasible. Right now we, we are focusing on, on our partners on, on this. 
Okay, thanks. And what is this part? Our this part here will actually be also in the VC from Monday. Great. So you're going to meet the, um, the global CEO of Ellie. Nice. <laughs> I have lots of questions. <laughs> Hit him hard. Okay, next. Okay, next question. Ah. Yes. Can someone bring Tesla charges from the navigation? <laughs> you start the navigation and you put like very far target. It says that you have to charge, of course, and it's offering like Tesla charges. Right. Yes. Uh, we're going to take note of that and see whether we can remove it or change it, of course. Uh, now, listening to you, I have to admit that doesn't seem I have so right. many pictures. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just, you know, I'm, I mean, like, the Tesla charger is not alone to the you know, the charging hub. Yeah. There is like ionic basically yeah. next to it. And it doesn't make sense if I use power pass, I use like plug and charge. I would prefer to use ionic for sure. Yeah. L let us give us a chance to look into it. Uh, you know, if we from my point of view and, and Matthias is gonna remind me of that anyway, uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the customer, you know, and customer centricity means uh, that if we can't find the right solution for consumers out there, they will either find their own way, uh, worst case is they find their own car, uh, which yes. doesn't carry the Skoda badge. Uh, so we will be egoistic here and see, uh, you know, that we provide a solution that is customer centric. I'm, I'm totally with you. And, and talking about, you know, don't send me any pictures. I'm, I'm actually online uh, every night uh, checking, you know, you guys out and your interaction, your blogs. Uh, I'm actually part of your groups uh, uh, as a member. Uh, remember, I, I can't remember which one it was, it was on Facebook and somebody said, is that really you, Klaus Zelma? <laughs> 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 what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I think I even said yes. I think I even said yes. Um, so I'm following you guys. I'm following that, and and uh, you have some people who can uh, confirm. Uh, where's Natasha? Uh, Natasha and uh, and Eric. Uh, they. Uh, they often get screenshots. <laughs> I said, hey guys, <laughs> this is what they talk about. And of course, Matthias' videos. This is what they talk about. What's our position? Where do we stand? What can we do? Unfortunately, uh, it's not that easy. You know, sometimes, I've, and it, as I said, your frustration is our frustration. It's often not the fact that we don't know. It's often the fact that there is no easy technical solution as much as we realize and try. So always rest assured, you know, we're improving. And if you take the journey that, you know, also you with your ANIACs have taken so far from a three point something to a four point something like that, things are improving massively. So give us the chance and I would like to ask for your trust and loyalty. Uh, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, um, uh, talk to Ariel in the car, uh, you know, uh, asked him, you know, his general take off the ANIAC. He said, it's a fantastic car, just fix the software. <laughs> You know, and will be forever happily married. Uh, when I asked him whether he would ever go into an ICE, he asked me whether I'm crazy. <laughs> Who's going to say in the video? Yes. <laughs> so give us a chance and don't, don't think, you know, that if you think that we're overseeing something, let us know. But we're looking at those things. Yeah? And I personally look at it all the time and I'm going to, you know. And this should be it for today. I hope you find some interesting information. You enjoyed some of the talks and some of the things I've shown you here from the EV launch meetup in Mlada Boleslav. Here you can have another look at the covered LROC which hits the markets very soon. And I guess this is a good background for finishing today's video. And if you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. Don't cons and consider to subscribe if you're not already to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out any new video, especially here from Lada Boleslav. And then we see each other in the next one. And until then, stay full of energy.